So for all of you guys that are on on this channel, hi, I'm Mary Behind the Chair. I'm the founder of, uh, of BehindTheChair.com. And this is Anko Tran. I don't think you need an introduction for my audience. So <laughs> we are so excited to have you here. But I'm going to just tell you a client story and then we're going to jump in. So for probably ever my whole life, I um, had long hair. It was always like kind of one length. There was a little bit. And everybody, I kept saying, I want to cut my hair short. I kept saying, I want to cut my hair short. And, um, and then I wanted to do like a shag. And everybody, I remember a hairdresser that had known me for a really long time said, you're not right for a shag. Your personality is not right for a shag. I think everybody got my personality wrong forever, you know? And when I cut it into a <laughs> shag, I started to feel more like myself. And finally, um, when Chris Jones cut it like completely off, cause he like Gianni Scumacci cut it in Britain, uh, in the UK, he was the first one to cut a lot of it off. And then Chris went one more step. And I've never felt more like myself in a head of hair before. And so for everybody that's out there, this is the first time I've actually really felt like this is what I was supposed to look like. So that- um, I love it. Even though I, love it. I haven't gained the quarantine 15 yet, but I have gained the quarantine 10. So who are you? First of all, you haven't gained the freshman I'm, 15 or the I'm, quarantine 15, but talk to us. Tell us how you, how you doing, <laughs> how you feel. Mentally, you know, Taking that, I do travel so much. I mean, I'm I never home, as you know. Like you, I, I'm just and you too. I like yeah. not being home and 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 having you know. I just moved to a new place and haven't re really stayed in this new place for a while. And I actually got a chance to like organize, get rid, you know, get rid of things and organize my closet and all that stuff. It feels so good, but it's going on like a month and a half, and I'm still not crazy yet. But I mean, I'm still keeping really. Um, just you know keeping busy with things like you know doll heads and stuff like that as you know i have so many doll heads friends and that's the only thing i think if we don't keep our um yeah. hands going yeah you know i was thinking we, about that is that true the dexterity of your hands is an issue if even after a month of it's not like the bicycle thing or is it truly what this, the, the physical dexterity you think is potentially a problem after that period of time I don't think it's so much of a problem that it hurts anything. I think, I think, I mean, I, I, I love doing hair. It's my passion. So for me, doing hair is like getting, you know, getting familiar with my, my hands and my fingers again. And just getting that, you know, yeah. cause I don't want to go in and rusty and all like shaky and stuff like that, but I just want to um, you know, exercise it. It's like exercising your body. Yes. It's like exercising your hands. So same kind of deal. And you know, I, I love that urge because yeah. I love what I do. So that's yeah. why I, I you know, play on the doll heads, I don't mind, but I think so, it's very important, so. So today I wanted, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the virus and how that's affected your salon. Obviously you're a, a, a quite a, um, not only are you um, an incredible hair cutter, you have an incredible salon and, and um, you've been responsible for helping people on Instagram so much, your whole team. I mean, you have a whole, you know, you're, you're sort of the father of, of, um, of Instagram haircuts, no question of the, of the lob, but you're also a father of like, I feel like teaching and mentoring in a new way. Do you, do you, do you wish that you had carried on? Well, maybe not today, but fashion's gotten so like, boy, it's just been one thing after another and in how fashion has been so affected by Instagram, by now obviously this, and it's just, it's incredible what's happened. Um, they were the first ones to take yeah. a really big hit in Milan, you know, this year when they couldn't do, I mean, that's when we all started to like, on the beauty side, I feel like that's when we all started going, oh my gosh, like this can shut things down and then Cosmoprof shut down and then, and it just was one, you know, one thing after another for sure. So when, when you started here, like, but I still want to know, like, fashion to hair, like what you woke up one day and you, I want to be a hairdresser or somebody was a hairdresser that you knew that you said, oh, or you were watching their hair walking down the runway instead of the clothes. Like, <laughs> what was it that made you, that made you <laughs> um, decide to do it? No, no one in my family does hair. Everyone in my family is pretty much either a business person or, um, and then we used to own a fish market. Um, oh. So they all do restaurants now. So they do restaurants and stuff like that and um, um, different types of business. Um, but it's always business for yeah. them. And I always, I'm the last one and very creative. And I'm like, let's do this, let's do that. So when it comes to hair wise, I think, I don't know. I think they, I always look at the hair. I'm always like, oh, you know, the hair's interesting and then stuff like that. And back in the days when you used to watch like John Paul Gaultier and like all these 
cool hair and stuff like that. I was so inspired. Even like back in when um, um, McQueen was on. Yeah. Like, McQueen is my idol. I love, love McQueen. Yeah, me too. And, and me too. I know. That's like, that's what I wore on stage forever. It was only McQueen. <sighs> like it was only McQueen. And then when Sarah came, I think that she did a great job, like actually yeah. carrying that forward. I really do, honestly. Um, it's always, it's always, you know, even Marcus filed for bankruptcy um, right now. They're all going, I mean, it's just so sad. So we have a Neiman Marcus, we, and we have Neiman Marcus and Saks across from each other. And, you know, most of the time though, I'm like, wow, sh dur during my shows, I'm shipping dresses, right? Because I don't have time to go do that. It's never, but that's always the first place I go, right? Is, 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 um, is Alexander McQueen. But Gautier still, I, 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 I was wearing a Gautier dress the day that I met Vidal Sassoon. So, um, and, wow. and I still oh. have that dress. I love that dress. And I wore it to an Aveda event not that Save long it. ago. And it's, I love that dress. It's my, it's still probably to this day is my favorite dress I've ever bought. You know what? It's, it's like all the, um, like, uh, like nylons, like women's nylons. What's the, what's the fabric called? That's all. And it's like, uh. it's so bohemian and I, I love it. Next time I see you, I'm going to wear that dress. Cause you can dress it up. Yes, and down. please. But Gautier was my I love favorite. That. When I was younger, Gautier was my favorite. And as I got older, um, and of course, obviously, he was even bigger then. And then McQueen became like, how not? Because McQueen's, McQueen's structure of being male fitting, like most of it, and I've always had so much more of a masculine side of femininity because of being a businesswoman and stuff, for sure. And that's why the shorter hair and stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, I just always loved McQueen for those really strong lines, you know, and yeah, and I yeah. Know, and now, now we're under fashion, but uh, here I'm wearing, <laughs> I brought like three things with me. I brought like, I didn't know I was going to be here for five weeks. I brought like three pairs of sweatpants, a cashmere sweater, a two BTC sweatshirts and a couple of leggings. And literally that's why you all see me every day with the exact same clothes on. Cause I'm not home and I have nothing here. So anyway, so then um, you started in hair and let's, let's walk you forward um, to um, when you, so then like, let's go forward to, to, uh, you know, like tell us when you really came on the scene, like when was it that all of a sudden, was it through Instagram? Was it through like, tell, walk us a little bit through your, through the past of your hair over the last 10 years, for example. When did you start the salon? Um, when did you guys well, start the salon? I, I, went to um i would go back i went to beauty yeah i'm oh, sorry go ahead you got go it? okay cool beauty school. i i went to beauty school i went to i went oh my god i went um this beauty school was like a hole in a wall it was you know i went straight for 10 months and it was incredible and um i graduated and then went to tony guy oh. um i started at tony guy mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. love 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 and i love anthony muscolo yeah. is me too Right, he, uh, right. I knew, I knew that because I had an uh, award when I found out when you when you won. That's right. I cried. I cried. Uh -oh. I, 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 he's my idol. Like he's, it's, he's amazing, 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 and he still is my idol. Um, and um, I went to Tony Guy for like a good five, six years, and then, um, then I decided to move to LA because either LA or New York, and I moved it to LA, and then I went to Beverly Hills, and that's when I um, started at Gavatelier, and that's when I start. Uh, blow drying okay. doing all these housewife blow dries and it's like amazing like i think that's one thing that whatever your career takes you it's just gonna you you're gonna pick up things <clears throat> you know what and and it's just like it's it's just you learn from all that stuff that you know that you grow and stuff like in in over the years so i went to um um beverly hills and um stayed it for like quite some time and I'm and then I opened up my own salon and um so that's that's I think that's uh the gif of it all and and I currently work with a really great company who um it's Melbourne yes, I'm, I know. I'm there you know we I okay so first of all there I we we had a meeting with them in New York maybe six months ago something like that I walked into their studio because they had their um a lot of their artists in from Japan and I was absolute. So first of all, I'm a giant fan of Japanese, of Japanese hair right now. I'm a huge fan of it. And I walked in and they were doing the kind of hair that I have been like posting on my own. I didn't want to, I, we had meetings all day, L'Oreal. I did not want to leave and actually go to the next meeting. 
I wanted to stay right there. And then I asked him, can I come back and watch these guys? Because they were incredible. Uh, there's just something about the creativity of all of, of this Japanese hair, especially where it's very PC, where they're really piecing it out, all the short hair, the yes. way that, and then the way that they're styling it, the, the lighting, the makeup. Like, I am so all about Japanese hair right now. You have no idea. Like, it's, <laughs> I've been so inspired. And it was all the same people. I was following the people that were in there, in the room. So if you guys don't know Milbon, you're going to be learning a lot about it. And I was so excited when I found out the fact that you were, like, literally now going to be running all of their their creative and education in Aesthetic. the U.S. Is that kind of the big deal? Tell us yeah. a little bit. Because I, I uh -huh. what a great yep, decision. Correct. And and then right. like out of nowhere, there it is. And uh, I, I love that brand. I love that brand. What an incredible decision. And and you can be so uh, creative. You get to like do amazing. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do amazing stuff. It's not as commercial. Who cares? Yeah. It's just it's not. <laughs> but it is. Though. Yeah, but it's it not. It is. I think we can see that coming here. I really do. I think we can see that. I. Anyway, I I'm not excited about it. I am excited <laughs> about it. So tell us how you chose them. I love it. I just love it. You, you, you can filter it to, you know, co commercialize. Totally and again, the, the, the thing is like, when you, when yes. you look at, yeah, totally. when you look at runways, when you look at, when you, look, when you dress yourself, yes. like Mary, you, you look at McQueen, you're not going to wear the whole entire thing. You're not going to do the whole outfit, but you're going to take that aspect of you and make it yourself. And that's what's great thing about like, when I, when I teach, I'm like, guys, I'm teaching you these things because you guys are going to take it and make it your own. Yeah. I don't expect you guys to reproduce the same thing. And it's like, yeah. then what's the point? That's reproducing. That's like not you. So, you know, I, I, I decided to go with Melvon just because I love, I love, I, I'm, I don't know, maybe in my past life, when I first went to Japan a couple years ago, I swear to you, I, I, as soon as I land, I'm like, wow, I feel like I used to live here. Maybe in my past life. Like, past life. I honestly feel like I used to live there. Wow. Uh, probably. I felt the same way in Paris, too. Paris and, 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 and uh, in Japan, I just feel the same. It's so weird. But, um, and Japan, it's just like, I love the fact that everything is so clean. Everything is so meticulous. And, and maybe I'm so meticulous in that sense. I'm like, it is, oh, I like this. It is. <laughs> You're right because you, you do actually you do have that whole Japanese like the everything where everything is so meticulous and um, yeah it's it, it's really no I was I was thrilled when I saw that and there are people asking about Milvon it is one of the most it's what it's actually one of the largest companies in hair in the world it's just not as well known here in the United States so I'm sure that that right. will change with you at the helm doing this. And, um, but yeah, it is actually one of the largest and, uh, and they're incredibly well respected in all of the art communities, in fashion. Um, a lot of the biggest hairdressers in the world uh, carry this line, work with the line, respect the line. Um, so I, I'm so excited once we all get back to work again uh, yes. to see what, what you guys are all gonna do. And, um, and yeah, I'm so excited same. to see that hair. I know. And hopefully one of these days <laughs> see that Japanese team with you uh, at one of our shows. Because, oh, that work. I mean, it was crazy because it wasn't just like that I was walking in to their education center, which is beautiful, by the way. It wasn't just walking in, but it was actually not in the perfect light, not in the perfect light. They were all just working on their work, and it was stunning. And it was just the way that it was, the texture in the hair is incredible. It's just, it's just so different. And, and I'm so they un They understand this. texture. Yeah. Yeah. And, and. I think it's a good marriage. I mean, a good collaboration with them. I'm their global creative director. Um, and, global. You know, oh my God. Okay. So I global. Know that. Yeah. Global creative director. Global. So you are from I know. Japan now. See, there you go. <laughs> you <know. laughs> That's not worthy. Not worthy. But like, I, I'm so honored to be with them. I think they 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 gave me a lot of good free. Like they gave me freedom to do what I want to do, and then they trust my aesthetic, and I feel like. It's very in line because I, I deal with a lot of texture. I, I love texture and I love, you know, creating texture and doing different things. And I think that's, that's like in my DNA. I like, I like building a foundation. I think coming from fashion, doing pattern making and all that stuff and, and draping and stuff like that. And then being able to like kind of mess it up yeah. and just, you know, yeah. without saying the other word, like just kind of like mess it up and then just have that, you know, 
the foundation with the crazy messy thing. And I love that con contrast between something that is so, you know, structural and then something that's so messed up that's yes. sit on top of it or something. I love that. Love that. So yeah, the, it's, um, and we, I think I, I'll post some, uh, some of the work that I love uh, later today because I'm so inspired. I have a whole, I actually have a collection in my Instagram that, you know, how you can set up your collections for what you like. And it's all, what's so funny is like there, um, it's all just Japanese hair. So it's a collection of just all the Japanese hair that I love. And I, some of the color that, that, they're doing and it's like some of the color blocking that they're doing around the around the face and just I just think that there's there's just this step above in no I don't want to say a step above because I don't think that's fair it's a step different that's taking things that we and it's very commercial like it's not it's more it's, it's like edgy there's it's edgy but the cut the cuts yeah. are commercial the cuts are commercial mm -hmm. but it's the edginess mm -hmm. of the color and the way it's being styled and then, and it's, it is taking kind of that, um, some of the, the cool, um, um, oh, what do I want to say? The anime and all of these different things that have been, you know, that the Japanese have been so inspired by for over the years. And then like taking that and they're adding the way that they're adding color and the makeup and, but they're doing it in such a tasteful way. Cause I always say with one shot, that's the most, the, that's the one place you can go wrong on one shot pictures is taking your makeup and just make, there's a thin, fine line between cheesy and not cheesy, you know what I mean? And yeah. makeup is like one of those those areas that you can just totally blow the whole shot if you just overdo it. And um, right. and and I just feel like they, I don't know. Okay, enough of Japanese. Yeah. Talking. <laughs> I mean, you know what you're excited you're about, so... about how you're getting clean. <laughs> but it's just, I'm just, yeah. I'm so excited for you. And I, I literally, when I Thank you. it, I Thank was you. just like, it's for the Americans that don't know about the brand yet. You guys are going to hear a lot, of, a lot about it, and just check it out and start watching. Like I said, I'll post some Japanese stuff. If I, I always promise I'm going to do it, and then I don't. But, uh, but <laughs> you should. But no, I love, and, but, I love it because I just think. I, I think I want to. I want to say something was where. Yeah, yeah. I, I and one thing that I really want to tell you guys that um, among this whole thing, um, when so. They don't really do online orders. So if your client calls and um, to get the products, they're going to give the credit that the client goes to the salon. They're going to give it back to the salon. Oh, so, that's awesome. So that's really great. It really helps us because, you know, we're salon owners and stuff like that. It really helps us to be a flow. I mean, little, every little thing helps. Yeah. So if a client calls in and like, hey, I go to Ramirez Trans Salon, um, blah, blah, and they give that credit back to us. Yeah. Or they give it back to whoever, whatever salon it goes to. So it's been, I think that's really, it's really great, important. Yeah, it's been great to see that. We um, actually, you guys, for everybody watching, we posted a page that shows all the affiliate programs. So I don't think we have Milbon on that page, so yes. we should add it. But all Please, the affiliate yeah. programs that everybody has, um, and some of them are from, uh, probably the lowest level is 20%, but some of them, I think Victory, um, Maddie Conrad's company is giving 50% back in cash. Wow. In cash, not in product, but in cash. Oh. So that's really, that's really, really cool as well. And you know, I, it's been- I love Maddie. Do you know what's been so funny too? I got to say this is, um, mm -hmm. as you know, that we launched um, ARC, our Japanese scissor line, which has been doing so well. In fact, it was funny because Chris Appleton, um, his bag was stolen right before the Super Bowl, and we had to message him over scissors because he's like, I can't cut without them. So we were just so excited that our scissors were there. Yeah. Sally Hirschberger, she wants them. She's doing something on Goop, and they um, they want us, you know, they they want them because now she's in love with them. We have a whole new series yeah. that have come in from Japan, so I need to send you a pair of them because they're incredible. Our series too, and um, and so. Um, uh, Thank you what yeah yeah i definitely have to send them to you but um but it's funny because um when you get the in like when you see the japanese and that what they're working on and the handcrafting that they're doing with it, it it is interesting when people talk about japanese steel versus actually being hand forged in japan and until we got into the into the business of scissors we didn't really understand exactly what that meant and there's a huge difference between Japanese steel and actually being hand forged in Japan because of what you were talking about before about the craftsmanship that we've all known to come and love in Japan. So it's been uh, it's been it's been interesting to yeah. to understand that more and uh, 
and you know, I want to go over someday. You know what I mean? I, I think it would be amazing to go over. I still have never been to Asia, like which I think is even crazier. I've yeah, I've never been to Asia. What? I know it. I know. I know. I was invited to come over. I was supposed to go over. And actually, there were three places I was supposed to go to Russia. I was supposed to go to um, I would love to go Israel. Yeah. And then also um, to China and all three of them, I was being invited to come over. All three of them have been eliminated because of, uh, of everything that's happened. Well, the first one, mm -hmm. Israel was because of the Iran, the Iranian, um, the, the plane that blew up in Iran. So Barack and oil was bringing us over there to Israel to see the factory and the whole bit. I was so excited. And then that happened and they had to cancel it. And the other two because of this, you know, so yeah. Yeah. I know I hate it when you see like yeah. on your on your, that when hope, you see hope. something that says that says like when it pops up on your screen that you're flying home from Italy today in you know like it pops up <laughs> reminding you that you're flying home today because your flight information yeah. and it's made me really sad that um that we can't it's been great to be in one place like you said that actually that's the it, there's nothing if there's one good thing about it it's being able to slow down long enough to just take a breath because after being on planes for 30 years at this kind of pace um, at 54 yeah. it, I agree with you that and, and I've been so much in solitude here that nature has had such a huge impact it always has had an impact on me in such a big way um, but it, it has been a blessing to be off of a plane for five weeks yeah and I, I agree feel the same I agree way. I know you feel the same um, way. I feel the same way um, Mandy, one of the um, um, audience asked, have I been back to Vietnam? I actually have not been back to Vietnam. You haven't? I'm, no, I'm dying to come back. I want to go back with my sister. Oh. And I really want to go back with my sister because my sister knows, like, you know, the um, villages and stuff that, you know, that we grew up with and stuff like that. And she, I want her to take me there. But... Every time I come, like, hey, hey, let's go this year. She's like, no, no, no. And she's just so, like, I don't have to, like, really drag her one day because she knows a lot of things. And I want to go back with her because she, she knows the things. But them out, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I think if I do go back, it's going to be such a, an emotional emotional experience because I know I'm going to cry because every time I see images of like Vietnam, like the war and stuff like that, it just brings me back to tears. And it's just like, do you, you know, do you remember but, um, it? do you remember being there? Not really at all. Mm -mm, yeah. Nothing, nothing. I don't think my memory, my memory, my memory start in the U S. So after, when I was six years old, wow. Isn't that crazy? I don't remember I, anything from past six. Which you should. No, so I mean before I, six. So I wonder if that's if that's trauma that's that's not allowing you to remember that. Probably. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I do. I want to open it. I don't know. I don't. I'm I'm okay. Like I don't. Do I need to open it? I don't know. I don't think so. so but when, welcome, to, welcome yeah. to Mary's life. <laughs> and I said, I, I wrote I've so many times on my Instagram about like I'm good. My sister. So I have an identical twin sister, and uh, and so uh, yeah, we both had some trauma growing up, and um, and we she unfortunately had to deal with it way earlier than I did. Fortunately, unfortunately, and she kept saying to me. Mary, like, and I go, and I would, she's like, you need to start, like, like, it's going to catch up to you. And I'm like, I'm good. I got this. I'm good. And then it did, it did catch up to me. And I'm like, she knocked down, she knocked the door, not kept knocking on the door. And I kept like, not answering this time. She like, knocked the door down, like she kicked it down. And I had to deal with it. And um, so you'll, it will be the, you know, it, it will happen in the right time. And, um, yeah. and if there are things in your life that you like, it's amazing to me how different I feel like I am today than I even was a year ago because I was able to work through things I didn't even know I needed to work through, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't even know what those things were. And um, an onsite mm -hmm. uh, really was mm. a place that allowed me, I did a week of group counseling um, and we had writers from HBO there. Like we had, it's a very creative place. So what are you going to do? So now we've got, we're back <clears throat> to the salon world. You've got an amazingly successful salon in, are you, you guys are in Beverly Hills, right? Is it Beverly Hills or West Yes, Hollywood? we are. Yeah. Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So now what? A couple of weeks from now, you guys will have the ability to go back to work, right? Yes. Yes. You have to take the precaution. You know, I think, you know, and, and right now is the best time to stock up. 
if yeah. you can like stock up on masses and um, uh, wipes and um, sanitation, um, you know, cleanings and um, you, maybe you gloves as well. Can you get them there? Huh? Can you get them in California? Are they still out? Like the disinfectant and all of that? We could. You guys can't. They're still out. Or they're still out. They're still out. Wow. Wow. They're still out. But you, you, you should check up on it. Yes, exactly. We check up on um, our supplies all the time. You just have to check up on it. And, yes. you know, even ask them like, hey, when did you guys get restocked? And then know that when it gets restocked, just be there and stuff like that. So it's, it's just one thing that we have to do. You know, we can't, it's just the way it is. So it is what it is. And I think taking as a strive with that and you just, then you don't think too much emotionally into it. You just have to do it. Yeah. And I think that's how I have to do with, you know, everything and, you know, especially now. So. And I think, you know, those of you guys that have been with me quite a lot, um, you know, talking to people like on and Nick Arojo, a lot of the salon owners, um, you know, we, we, and everybody comes on at night with me and we all sit and talk about like how we're feeling, um, what's happening, when are things going to open back up? Are they not going to open back up? And I think, as I said last night, you know, this is the most complicated situation to ever advise anyone on because we're, we are stuck in a situation where, you know, as I was saying, like, I can tell you how to get off your ass and follow your dream. I can tell you, I can try to inspire you to believe in yourself. I can do those things, but it's hard because, we know that there are many of you that your, your states are going to start opening up and, um, and you're, you may be afraid so to go back to work. And I think the one thing that on you and I were talking about earlier that I think, you know, um, we should just, just maybe openly talk about, and you shared something with me about, you know, um, that and I'll get to that in a second. So I just want to say, make this statement is we're all right now in a situation where there are people that, say, don't go, you don't go back to work. You're hurting people. There are people that say, I need to go back to work because I need to make a living. I need to feed my kids. I think that if there's one thing that I think I could ask you, and I think that, that, um, that on probably feels the same way, let's be kind to each other and let's make sure that we don't judge each other for the decisions that we each individually need to make for the benefit of our own families right now. And I know on, you were telling me earlier that, um, that, uh, that you know, some people that are doing house calls. And they said, how do you feel about that? And I, I want you to answer that question because I think it's an important thing for everybody to hear. Well, I think, I mean, in their situation, they have to feed their family, yeah. you know, and they have, they have means that they have to do. And I really think that just as long as you take the precaution, exactly. like, you know, wear your mask, you know, blah, 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 and don't have a lot of people in the room. And then, you know, you know, maybe buy that thermal gun with you. Um, not that. Is it thermometer? Ah, <laughs> the thermometer. thermometer. <laughs> it looks like a gun, but I'm, I'm, thermometer. I, I see a meme. I see a meme coming. I don't know. I just I feel like there's a meme coming. I don't know. I just this is Okay. <laughs> thermometer. Just just make sure that you know. I just just, just to check. You know. Yeah. And I think if you take the precaution, really be safe about it. I don't. You know. If you really have to feed your family, not everyone is fortunate. Not everyone is. You know, you, you do what you have to do. And I really feel like there's no judgment in that. Exactly. You can't judge someone for that. And also, everyone has such different background yeah. as far as, like, you know, you don't know their stories. Like, you know, listen to them out. But just as long as they take the precaution. Yeah. That's all. And like, I think that's, that's very, very important. You know, people are saying, well, that's not social distancing. Well, guess what? In the state of Georgia, um, on Friday, um, the idea of social distancing goes right out the window. And in your state, it will be not, yeah. not your state, but in everybody's state. So this idea of social distancing, yeah. this is where I personally believe and I get on my soapbox about we've got to stop judging people. This virus will not, it will not magically go away tomorrow or the next day. So we are going to go back to work in this environment. And if people feel like if people have enough money and they can stay home and they want to stay home, then they should stay home that if that's what they're, that they they're comfortable with but if their state is opening up and their salon can open back up i literally will I'll, I'll go after anybody that goes after the people that are going back to work because they have to feed their families like and there are do you know how many people there's a big survey that we have going out right now that literally says that's all about how much longer are you i mean one of our questions is about your level of like desperation like, are you desperate? Are you literally feeding? Can you pay? Are, are you saving money for food right now and not paying your rent? In our mind, that's desperate. Are you not good? Like, 
I've got money for rent and I've got money for food, but that's it. Like, and it's going to run out. Like, so we want, we want to send that back out to national again. And I think that, and then are you going to go back? Are, are you not afraid? I'm going to go back. I can't wait to get back. Are you kind of afraid and you don't want to go back, but you have to go back because you have to feed your family. Like this is what this survey coming out is going to be all about. And I think that it's, you know, and when people allow you to do house calls, then guess what? You can do house calls. It's as I was saying, I'm not judging anyone for being legal or not, but we also know that tomorrow, if now you can do house calls, okay, you can do house calls. Have you ever speeded at, you know, have you ever, have you ever gone past the speed limit? Like, I think we need to be a little bit less judgmental and a little bit more, um, because I'm sure that you probably have speeded. Understanding. Yeah, a little bit more understanding of, and a little bit more thoughtful of the people that have to work because the government doesn't have any money and they don't have a brother, a sister, a mother, a father that can give them money. They have to have food. And uh, I think that that's yeah. the really, really um, uh, exciting. I'm going to get a new job yeah. because I have asthma. And, and, going to be a risk and, and, and I have that's to say, true. just, I, said, just follow I, your guideline. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think, um, I, I do think that we may see, and if that means that people feel uncomfortable about going back in and then they go find a different profession, I hope that's not the case. But I do understand if people are sick, you know, and I think that the most important thing that you guys can do right now is I think you can communicate with your clients. So the first thing you should do is start talking to them, DMing them. How are they doing? Do they still have a job? How are they feeling? And then how are they feeling about coming back to the salon? I think it's really important that you guys communicate with your clients and then communicate with your hairdressers that work in your salons as well and find out how they feel. Find out what's going to make them comfortable coming back into the salon again. That communication is key right now because it will help you know how many clients you're going to have when you open your doors back, in, back up again. And then also it will help you determine how you need to move forward. Are you going to have to do house calls for older you know, for older clients. And how are you going to do that? And are you going to be double booking? Probably not, as you and I were talking about earlier. You can't double book. No. So, mm -mm. you know, how- For me, gonna, no. You know, we no. talked, yeah, how are you going to keep the space between people? You know, and yeah. if you're a really busy salon, can you afford to be six feet or do you have to put some sort of subdivider? So the thing that is important is right now, we can be spending time thinking about how we're going to go back instead of spending time thinking about how we're, not or like just sitting there going what are we going to do because i think the reality is is that the government's not going to take care of everybody for a year so we're going to have to figure out what 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 we're going to do and maybe there will be help or support from the government for certain industries that do that are in the business of touching people you know that could be true i i, I just don't know but at this point yeah. we uh we don't know exactly what's happening and i think you said it earlier we just have to pay attention to what's going on in our counties and our states, especially counties, which is interesting because yep. in our state, yep. there's yep. not, there's been for no us is county. Of, yeah. In our state, there's been no yeah. discussion of counties. It's all been statewide, which is crazy because I'm in the middle of nowhere and Chicago is, you know, is Chicago is downtown Chicago. So, um, you know, it's been, what other things are you guys thinking about that you're going to do in your salon? Um, have you been talking to your clients and your team and how are they feeling? Well, my clients, they've been asking, they're like, can you do house calls? I have not done anything. I have not worked ever since um, mid-March. So I still don't feel, you know, that I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm listening to the news, like as far as like right. our county and our, our state. You know, we do have guidelines that um, our governor, our governor has given us, so oh, I want to follow that. You do, yeah, okay. and I'll send that. To, I'll send that to you, yeah, um, that Mary, would be great. and then yeah, yeah, that would be great. And then for for state of California and stuff like that, um, I I just think we honestly every I hate this feeling, but like it's just you have to play day by day and see how it goes. And I think one thing that is just like don't don't get into a hole into of like that whining you know, and, and so get yourself into that self black hole. So like just like, over the self -pity. yeah, we can all feel self pity for like, I did for probably a week. Um, because you know, we're all suffering. I mean, we have, you know, huge, yeah. huge contracts with clients that are being canceled, like, and I still have 35 people on and I was not one of the ones that got funded uh, for the PPP program. So, you know, that's, uh, it's, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, we all have the right to do it but not for long, like we need to step up. And I think that reading and learning and 
Um, you know, on BTCU, we took all of our um, all of our lives that we had and we put them all together and people can get those free for three days and then they can um, they get them for a dollar a day. So we like tried to take all of our uh, lives and do that, you know, just to try to help people learn because I feel like if we learn, you've been giving tons of free education on your page, which is great. You've done a lot of lives, yeah. haven't you? You've done I try, yeah. I, 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 I think this is a good time to speak to your community. You know, I have like professional, I also have clients on it. So, you know, clients, I give free consultation. And then along with that, they get products for Melbourne. So I send them a gift package of like awesome. shampoo, conditioner, and also um, uh, styling products. So I think that's one thing that Melbourne is helping, you know, me to help my clients. Um, and then I, you know, give like, you know, tutorials on like how to do hair and then with my educator and stuff like that. I'm trying, you know, I think I'm tr trying to keep busy. And I think that's one thing that we can do yeah. as of now, you know, well, and then it, I, I agree completely. And I also think, you know, there's been like, we talk about a lot of, uh, you know, um, hairdressers that are teaching people how to cut hair and um, all of that. And I think that the most, or root touch-up kits where some people say that's not professional. I think whatever, you know, Arnie Miller, who was the founder of Matrix said to me once, I said, how do you make decisions? And he said, we only ask ourselves one question. Is it good for a hairdresser? And I would say that back to all the hairdressers in the world is, is it good for your client? So if your client doesn't, if your client doesn't want to walk around with gray hair, um, you know, because, or even be on Zoom calls with gray hair, I don't think it's in our best interest or, and I don't even think it's fair to say, um, you know, uh, like wait for me until you, that's not fair. You're not their client. They're your client. And they, it's not okay to say, you know, just stay gray on those zoom calls because I expect you to, or I need you to, or whatever. I think it's okay to, to give them the root touch-up kit and to teach them how to do the T-zone so they don't. So, you know, and it's also okay if people want to dress up in their uh, full on, like they're going to just, you know, they're going to a business meeting and sit, you know, in you know, at a, at a chair and be on a Zoom meeting that way too. I, I think it's important that we, that we allow our clients, you know, to learn how to do that if they need to. They're going to come back to you. They definitely want to come back to you, but we need to help them in like in a time where they're not feeling so great either. There's nothing like feeling, you feel so much better when you, your hair looks beautiful and when you have great color. And so we know that there's a lot of clients looking really great and not feeling great about themselves in the least we can do is say, I want to help you feel better. So I'm going to help you do this. And I think that that's, you know, a lot of hairdressers, I think, feel the same way. Um, I think we need to help clients that need the support. Like that's what it's all about.